Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost. Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available. Shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> Available. Summer 2027 and a half BC, the album, Dad. Shimmy, shimmy. AF. Hey, little thing, let me light your candle because I'm on my arm so hard to handle now. I went to a party last Saturday night. I didn't get laid. I got in a fight. Uh-huh. Kiss me once. Come on, pretty baby. Kiss me deadly. Boost. Okay, I gotta hurry up and get through this video because my husband's on his way home and we're going to the pool. Okay? He's coming home early from work today and we are going to go to the pool. Well, I'm going to go to the pool. I think he's going to go too, but we'll see. So anyway, um, I got to get right into this video because I've gotten a couple comments from people lately and they have said, oh my God, I'm 20 minutes into this video and you haven't even gotten to the drama yet. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Welcome to a Peter Mon video. Well, I'm 15 minutes into this video and you haven't talked about a damn thing yet. Well, <laughs> welcome to a Peter Mon video. Welcome to, it's like a variety show over here. Anyway, okay, let's get right into this today though, actually. Where am I at for all my people out there? <laughs> Timestamp people, minute and 33 seconds. Okay, so uh, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Uh, the other day I got the comment and this made me so happy. Somebody said, I'm like seven minutes into this video and I am so confused what is going on. I love that so much because you know what? I am in a constant state of confusion. No, I am. Last night, I watched two episodes of Dark Matter. I watched like six episodes of Sister Wives and I started Love Island and I got like five minutes into it. I was like, oh no, I got to save this for tomorrow because all, all my people are watching Love Island. My husband's caught up on it. He says it's the greatest show since sliced bread. My good Jenny Tanya is watching it. My friend Nikki is watching it. My cousin Caroline's watching it. All my neighbors are watching it. Yes, all my old timey neighbors. All the people that I know in my life are watching Love Island. I have to watch it and Big Brother is starting at the end of this month. Oh my God. And I watched that man with a thousand kids. Oh my God. I have so many videos to put up over on my Peter Watches TV channel. So all those reviews are coming up over there. But anyway, I'm now on season five of Sister Wives in case anybody cares. But I am so confusion because I am like, I feel like if you've watched Dark Matter, it's about like different timelines. Like you go into a box and you're in a different timeline, you know, like, okay. But anyway, I feel like I am a sister wife <laughs> that is living in different timelines, trying to hook up with somebody on Love Island. Well, I was watching something else. What else was I watching? I'm so confused. Oh, and I'm reading the Walking Dead graphic novels, so I feel like zombies are constantly attacking me. Listen, if you come to one of my videos and five to seven minutes in, you are total confusion. Trust me. Okay, you are at home. Okay, we are all confusion over here. If you are confusion, raise your hand. Okay, raise your hand and say, I am confusion. I stole that confusion thing from that that Instagram guy. I, I don't. I, my husband sends me his Facebooks. He doesn't send. Them, we call him the Facebooks. He doesn't send me his TikToks or his Instagrams. Okay, his name is I think Terry Terry K or something like that. I love him so much. He is so funny. Anyway, is he problematic? I don't know. But anyway, I don't know everybody in the world that's problematic. I think people think that like I keep a notebook. It's like problematic pe people according to Peter Mon. One, Colleen Colonoscopy Ballinger. I don't keep a list like that, okay? I know y'all think I do, but I don't. But I do have quite a few videos to make this week. I have a Colleen Colonoscopy Ballinger video to make. I have a James, a Jeff, a J J James, I almost said James Charles. I have a Jeffree Star video to make. Well, I mean, anyway, I have a Jeffree Star video to make. And then I have a J-Lo, <laughs> Jenny from the Block video to make. Um, and yeah, so that's kind a little different over here. I'm trying to do some different videos. Don't. I don't know what don't, but don't do that. Anyway, so I'm kind of sliding. Um, I'm kind of easing into uh, the, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, uh, not a good joke. Uh, uh, ease. <laughs> Anyway, do they still make that stuff? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, I, am, I was trying to ease into... This video is all over the place. This is People are like, what is going on? This is such confusion today. So, okay, about a week and a half ago, I put up this thing because I've been doing these, what, do you, what is my opinion, unpopular opinion about these influencers, these YouTubers, these pop culture figures, right? So last night, when this video goes live, it'll still be on my Instagram. So you can go over there and comment if you want to, okay? But, so last night, I put it up on my Instagram again. And I put over here, oh, look at that. Somebody, their dog is watching my video. And that's so sweet. I love that so much. And let's see, see all the things that I, I uh, put up on my Instagram last night. I always put, like, you know, uh, 
uh, rescue animals, squirrels and dogs, inspirational quotes. Here's an inspirational quote. Some weeks you'll move fucking mountains. Some weeks you'll barely make it out of bed. Whatever week you're having, you are so damn beautiful, strong, and brave. And I totally agree with that too, you know? It's like some weeks, like, you just can barely get anything done. And other weeks you're like Superman or Superwoman, you know? Whatever week you're having... Give yourself, you know, uh, be proud of whoever you are today and how well you're doing today. Tomorrow you might be doing a little bit better or you might be doing a little bit worse. But for whatever you're doing today, you showed up and you should be proud of that. Okay, so the next one. Oh, here it is. Well, let's go look through all my, here's my question. But let's look through all my Instagram. Oh, here's this. So many people sent this little picture of this. What was it? Uh, a squirrel stopping to smell a flower. I don't think it may, much looks like a squirrel. I think it kind of looks like a chipmunk, honestly. Here's my next one. My next inspirational quote. Be too much, be extra, live large, smile. Because I always say be too much, right? Be too much, be extra, live large, smile big, laugh hard, celebrate your damn self, open your heart, express your emotions, use your words, giggle, dance, soak in the sun, splash in the waves, breathe deep, and love your damn life. You only get one. And I love that. Amen. Oh, this little drawing of this, like, dog, and he's flying in this, like, uh, air balloon. So much peace comes with staying home, staying low-key, and staying true to yourself. Isn't that the truth? Okay, so I put this thing up here, and I said, before I do my video of my opinions of certain public figures or influencers, anyone else you want to, uh, me, you want my opinion about? So I thought we would just start with these, the most recent ones, even though I have about a hundred from the uh, last time I did it. Okay, so somebody... <laughs> <laughs> somebody, okay, I'm just going to read them straight down, okay? If I don't know who the person is, I'm going to skip it. Somebody said, Chris, Shane's yes man, I mean cameraman. Well, okay, so I actually covered Chris in my, did I, did I cover him in my last video that I did where I talked about my unpopular opinions about people? I don't know if they're popular or unpopular. They're just my opinions about people. I talked about Chris in, um... Uh, Shane's cameraman in my last one. Now, I know Trisha Paytas watched that because I talked about Ela Klein's clothes brand, Teddy Fresh, and then on her podcast, she said in Peter Mon's video, right? And she said something about that in my... So, hey, Trisha girl, how are you doing? Hey! Lots of people ask about you and Oscar, so I'll be getting to that either in this video or my next video that I do because I'm probably going to have to split it into two. So, anyway, what do I think about Chris... Shane's uh, videographer. I think I shared this last time. I think Chris seems like a really nice guy. Um, he, I don't think he is um, maybe as, I think, okay. I think I said last time, I don't think he's as creatively talented. I don't think he's as the videographer that Andrew was, okay? But I think, <clears throat> you know, like we always want to compare somebody to the last person they are. The thing is, I've watched a couple of Chris's videos that he does on his own channel. And there's a way about Chris, right? Like, Chris is, like, studied film. Like, I think that that's important to note, too. Like, Chris has studied film. Like, went to college for that and things like that. I think that's one thing that people don't ever really acknowledge with Chris. Um, and he talks about it on his channel and things like that. <clears throat> it's not so much that he's, like, I don't, okay, I don't think he is... He brings the 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 whistles and the all that kind of stuff like Andrew did. And I also think looking back now, Andrew was probably a lot of the creative genius of Shane and Shane Dawson because it seems like since Andrew's been gone, Shane really struggles with coming up with a lot of ideas. Okay. Um, that's just my feeling about it. I think it was a very smart move for him to go back to all these conspiracy theories because people love the conspiracy theories of Shane Dawson. So I think that was very smart. I think Shane Dawson is somebody that's always been like, I want to give the people what they want. And so I think that that was very smart for Shane to do that. Um, and the podcast does very, very well. I think Chris seems like a really, really nice guy. I think, unfortunately for Chris, like I'm just doing right now, comparing him to, to Andrew, like, I think he came in at a really unfair time. Like, you know, if, like, they had brought him in, let's say, three years before, and Andrew was, like, training him to work with Shane, like, people would have accepted Chris differently. Chris would be have blown up on social media. Chris would have a huge following and things like that, right? I think it's because it seems like he's Andrew's replacement is what a lot of people, I think, take issue with. I think also the ways that Shane, like jokingly or I don't know seriously flirts with him and it's very uncomfortable because a lot of people are like okay well Rylan's sitting right there but that's not Chris's fault right like that's on Shane um I think Chris seems like a really really nice guy honestly when you watch his other videos on his other channel 
you kind of really get who he is as a person. And, I mean, he's not Shane. He's not Rylan. He's not Andrew. He never will be. He's his own person. And I wish on the podcast and things like that, instead of him just being kind of like this guy that's quiet and kind of laughs and whatever, they would celebrate him a little bit more for that because he has a lot of good insights. And that's what I think about Chris. Um, Tana Mojo. So, T Tana Mojo has been in a, in a lot lately, okay? And um, if people want me to do a whole video about Tana Mojo, I've been thinking about It's on my list. So about all the things that have come out with Tana Mojo. So let me know if you want me to make... A lot of people have asked me to do that. Um, hold on a second. Somebody said, Rich Lux and his obsession with Michaela Nagara. I don't know that I think that Rich Lux has an obsession with Michaela Nagara at all, in all honesty. Um, I think that Rich Lux makes videos that he thinks are going to get good views. Like, a lot of us, right? Like, I don't think that he is obsessed in any way with Michaela Nagara. Um, in fact, I, you know, Rich Lux is one person that, um, when you talk to him behind the scenes, he isn't somebody that, like, in all honesty, most of the drama channels kind of aren't like this. Like, <clears throat> maybe years ago, like, when we would talk to each other on the phone, all of us, like, we would be talking about... Um, you know, like, oh, can you believe that this happened? Can you believe that happened? Now, Rich does send me, like, tea, you know, pretty regularly to, like, make a video about or something that he thinks would be good on my channel that he won't cover on his channel. He'll send me, like, stuff like that, right? Um, as do, we all do that for each other, I think. But I, you know, like, in the last couple years, like, when I talk to any influencer that I talk to, I was just talking to somebody yesterday that's, that's texting me that's not in the drama community whatsoever. I mean, I would read you the text messages, but, like, you don't know who it is. I'm not going to say. But they were like, hey, how are you doing? It's been a while since I've talked to you. I mean, that's very much what the conversations are like, you know? It's not like these people are ate up with it. I mean, I don't know that I think that there's anybody that I have met in the last, or talked to in the last two to three years, that when I've talked to them, they are so ate up with the drama. That's not necessarily the case of how it was five or six, seven years ago. I mean, we were pretty in it to win it back then, right? But today, I don't think that's the case. I'm not just talking about Rich. I'm talking about anybody. Like, I, don't, I think that's kind of the misconception about drama commentary channels, is that we, like, we stop filming, and then we're like, oh my god, what's going on? I don't think anybody's like that. Any drama channel today that I know of, you know, of, of the five or six of us that were around back in the day, you know, and plus, like, Adam McIntyre, I don't think he's like that. I don't know that, like, you know, even Spill Sesh, I don't think she's like that. I don't think T Spill's like that. I don't think anybody's really, like, that ate up with it today. I think it's, like, this is what they do, and we're gonna, like, look at it and whatever. But I don't think anybody's obsessed with it. It's like, you know, if you make more than two videos a month, you're obsessed with somebody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So, all right, let's see. Um... I'd like to hear your updated outlook on Gypsy Rose Blanchard and all of her divorce drama. Well, I'm actually gonna, that's on my list as well, if you'd like me to make that. Um, Katja from RuPaul's Drag Race. Well, you know, a couple people asked me to talk about her and Trixie. I don't really know. I know Trixie has been very supportive of JoJo Siwa, I think, recently. I think that's a weird vibe. I don't really get it. Um, I have some very personal opinions about uh, just TV show watching of Trixie. I mean, I've always, here's the thing. Trixie Mattel and Kim Chi were, like, huge in the Chicago bar scene long before they were ever, like, not just as drag queens, but, like, they put on, like, the white parties and the Neverland parties, I think is what they were called, and things like that. They put them on for years and years and years before anybody knew who they were on Drag Race, right? I mean, they were prominent members of the LGBTQIA plus community in Chicago for years before they were ever on RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm not sure. I think Trixie Mattel is so different, and I think what RuPaul saw in Trixie Mattel was that Trixie is so different, and has such a unique voice and I think that there were so many people at that time that were gravitating towards Trixie and the makeup style and things like that I think that's really what got Trixie to crown I don't know that I think that Trixie is in all honesty from a lot of the shows that I've seen and whatever that fantastic of a queen in all honesty um and I don't to be honest with you really care what her opinions are about world issues <laughs> like that's just really I mean she's not somebody that I'm going to for world issues if you want to know the truth um I watched Trixie's documentary Moving Parts I thought it was fantastically done I love her playing music um I like her as a person but I don't, I mean, I don't know her or anything like that. Um, but that wasn't who you asked me about. Who was it you asked? Katja. I think Katja is hilarious, naturally hilarious. Um, I saw something recently about 
um, focusing more on her sobriety and things like that. I think that's fantastic. I'm always supportive of anybody that is, you know, working harder on their sobriety or things like that. Or somebody said something about that. I don't, to be honest with you, uh, if it's not the season that I'm watching, I don't keep up that closely with, like, the Rue girls unless it is, like, I used to follow them all on Instagram and all that kind of, I unfollowed all of them. I don't follow any of them anymore. I could care less. Um, and that was just kind of a change that I made, like, I think it was two years ago after the accident. I unfollowed, like, all influencers, all these people that just, it, I just, I didn't care anymore. It was like, I wanted to focus on things that, like, really, like, brought me happiness. So, that's kind of my thing. But I, I think Katja is one of the most, from what I've seen on the show, is one of the most hilarious, naturally hilarious people I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. Um, Mallory Brooke. Oh, I love Mallory Brooke. And I just saw that she did, um, a video and I don't want to speak to it yet. And I won't be making an entire video about it because I know it's a very sensitive topic about a relationship that she got out of. But I, I saw just like a little bit about it underneath the video and I want to watch it. Um, I do want to say that Mallory Brooke has been somebody that I've talked to behind the scenes and she's always just been such a kind and gentle person. And I think she is just a phenomenal human being. And Mallory, I just want to send you a lot of love right now. I know you're going through a really difficult time. So I just want to send Mallory a lot of love. Um, Chapel Run. Well, a lot of people last time in my video sent me a lot of recommendations. And in all honesty, I haven't looked up a single one yet. <laughs> just so, okay. But I will tell you the last song that I downloaded... <laughs> The little share came out there, right? Forever Young by Alphaville, which was from the Bratz, uh, the Bratz documentary. And the music is better by Rufus DeSoul. That's their new song that just came out. And uh, yeah, and a bunch, bunch of old songs. So anyway, okay, let's get back. Oh, where was I? Okay. Let's see the next question. Tana, Brooke, and Alyssa, Violet. Okay, that's an, that's another one that I'm going to... That's the part of that. Stephen King. Well, okay, here's the thing with Stephen King. Like, so I'm trying to try to get into some Stephen King books. But, like, everyone that everybody recommends to me on Audible is, like, 45, 48 hours long. Okay, listen. Listen, Linda. I like a good six, eight-hour book on Audible, okay? At two and a half times speed. So that is a long-ass book for me. Okay, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I bought Insomnia because somebody said it was their favorite book of life. Okay. Uh, creamy or crunchy peanut butter? It kind of depends, but I like crunchy peanut butter probably. If I had to go, I just picked, it would be crunchy peanut butter. Um, any small businesses you support and would like to highlight? Oh, what a good question. Small businesses. Well, you know, it's interesting because, well, I just bought a bunch of stuff on Etsy the other night, a bunch of jewelry. I think it was called Wonder Jewelry was the name of the brand. Um, and I bought a bunch of her jewelry. I'm, I'm looking around. Well, Caddis Reading Glasses, I absolutely love them. But I don't know that I would call them. Two of my favorite brands that are smaller and they're independent are Birdwell. It's a surfing company. They make like corduroy shorts, shorts, swimsuits, t-shirts. I love Birdwell so much. Birdwell is probably one of my favorite, probably is my favorite clothing brand of life. And then Caddis, C-A-D-D-I-S, Reading Glasses. Everybody asks me where I get my reading glasses from. I mean, I have them all over the house. And I love them. I probably spent I mean, a fortune on Caddis reading glasses. But those aren't really small businesses. Um, Simone Biles. Okay, so here's a question that, like, I get asked this, and then I'm, like, afraid to answer it. Because I'm like, is Simone Biles problematic right now? The last time I think I saw Simone Biles, she was doing, like, 400 flips in a row or something like that. Is she getting ready to go to the Olympics? I don't know anything about what's going on with Simone Biles right now. Seems like a real sweet gal, though. Bless her heart. I don't know anything about Simone Biles, if you want to know the truth. Okay, where are we at? All right, Todd and Julie Chrisley case. <laughs> I mean, I used to watch that show. You guys want to know a little funny story about this? Okay, so what was the show called? Ask Todd, Ask the Chrisleys, or Keeping Up with the Chrisleys, or something like that. So I used to show, watch that show religiously, and I tweeted out one time, and I, like, added Todd Chrisley in it, and I said something like, I love... Chrisley, is it Chrisley Knows Bass? Is that what it was called? I love that show so much. I just wish it wasn't scripted. And he tweeted me. He like retweeted it and responded. And he was like, yeah, I wish it wasn't. It's not scripted at all. I'm like, girl, please. Your show is so scripted. Okay. <clears throat> what do I feel about Todd and Julie Chrisley? I mean, I don't know what to think about them. I mean, I, I will say this is interesting is that, you know, there's so many celebrities and pop culture, public figures that get caught 
an illegal behavior and then they don't like go to jail or prison or anything. So they're like, I mean, both of them went. Like, that's a huge deal, you know? So I, I don't know. I don't really think much about them if you want to know the truth. I mean, people are asking me all the time what I think. Bethany Frankel, I cannot stand Bethany Frankel. She is like my least, I, I, of all the housewives, of all the franchises, Bethany Frankel, I, I cannot stand Bethany Frankel. Okay, Stephanie Harlow. And somebody put kind of like a face up like this. Well, there's all this stuff that's going on with Stephanie Harlow and her ex right now. And, um, you know, here's what I think, okay? That there are always two sides to every story. And I'm not coming out and doing commentary on somebody's old relationship. Um, and what I think happened and what I think didn't. And very serious allegations. And that's what I think. And I wish all of them the best. Um, that's what I think about Stephanie Harlow. I, I, so many people have asked me to cover that. That's not a video that I'm going to cover over here. Trixie Mattel. Somebody asked me again. Um, this is where, like, again, like, somebody asked me about Enrique Iglesias. They're like, uh, is, it, I mean, is there something problematic about Enrique, Enrique Iglesias right now? <gasps> oh, he could be my hero. I don't know. I mean, I love the whole family, if you want to know the truth. My dad, I grew up listening to, um... Julio Iglesias. My dad had that CD of Willie Nelson and Julio Iglesias together, and my dad would just play that over and over and over again while he was grilling out in the summer. My dad loved that so much. Mama Tot, I covered on my last, uh, well, my first video that I did of this. I love Mama Tot. Um, and, you know, I think she just recently again talked about the, the loss of her son and um, the passing of her son. I, I Mama Tot is somebody for me I will tell you the weird, the one weird thing. I didn't understand why she showed up to Michaela Nagara's wedding. Like, that was such a weird vibe to me. I didn't get it. Um, but, like, she also is the person that, like, if she got an invitation, I feel like she would show up because she is somebody that suits up and shows up. So, I got it for that reason. It wasn't like I aligned her to Michaela Nagara in that situation or anything like that. I think Mama Tot is, like, I used to watch her before she kind of blew up. I actually, like, it's so interesting because, like, I don't follow anybody on... Uh, on TikTok anymore. This is where people are like, oh, he gets called out and then he does something. Okay, I honest to God did not know that I still followed James Charles on TikTok, so I just unfollowed everybody. I was like, that, that's a pretty safe bet then, okay? This is where people want to say things like, oh, when it when Peter finds out about it, then he does something about it. Sure shit, bring it to my attention, okay? If I follow somebody or if I have a highlighted comment of somebody's and I'm not aware of it, it's somebody that I don't support, Colin Ballinger, James Charles, whatever, let me know. I will deal with it immediately, Okay, unlike all these other people that I've called out, that takes them months if they ever do deal with it. Okay, I'm still waiting about Robbie De Christie. Oh man, my DMs, whoo, hot potatoes, whoo. People want me to talk about Robbie De Christie right now and who she aligns with. I'm telling you right now, okay. I I'm looking into it, and I don't want to come out with this video, but. People are sending me a lot of stuff about Robbie D. Christie right now. Christie, I'm telling you right now, you might have a lot more to deal with than the fact that you never came out and spoke about James Charles, okay? And I'm not saying that that video is going to come from me because I don't, I don't know that I'm going to make that video, okay? But I'm just telling you right now, like, you know, it's like people always want to say that to me. It's like, oh, you called, you demanded that. I never demanded from Robbie D. Christie to come out and talk about James Charles. I thought it would be a good idea for her to. And I actually, in like multiple videos afterwards, said I never demanded from Christie to come out and talk about it. She knows I didn't because on the phone call, I didn't demand it from her. She knows that. I said, girl, you do what you want to do. This is what you asked me for my suggestions. This is what I told. And people are like, oh, pe people demand it. Well, listen, people brought to my attention that I was still following James Charles on TikTok. I unfollowed everybody. <laughs> you know, people brought it to my attention that I had a pinned comment of James Charles up on a video of mine from years ago. Guess what? Block James Charles on my channel. <laughs> it's pretty easy, right? See, I showed how easy it is. Then they use that against me and they go, oh, when Peter Mon gets called out for it. Like, I wanted that pinned comment. I mean, I call James Charles out left and right all the time. You think if I knew that there was a pinned comment up there that I would want it up there? I don't even feel like that's a stupidity move. I think it actually shows what all the haters that want to come for me and be like, oh, Peter had this comment up over there. Peter was following James Charles. What you showed was how easy it is to take care of a situation like that. Because I turned around and I did it. In fact, I unfollowed everybody on TikTok and I blocked James Charles from my YouTube channel so he can never leave a comment again. See how easy it is? And I came out and told the truth about it in this very next day. It's not that hard, right? I, you, the, the haters actually handed me on a silver platter proof to all these people out there that will not clean up their own messes how easy it is to deal with this situation. Okay. 
So anyway, what was that? Oh, Jessica. Oh, so that's what Mama taught. She's going to uh, Michaela Nagara's wedding. I thought that was kind of a weird vibe, but I didn't really care if you want to know the truth. Um, Mama Tot is somebody that I used to watch back in the day on TikTok. Like I said, oh, that's what got me into it. Because I think she still follows me on TikTok, but I don't know. I don't post anything on TikTok. But I used to love her videos where, like, somebody would get in a, in a TikTok and they'd be like, I hate myself and blah, blah, blah. I'm literal trash. And she would be like, honey, don't talk about yourself that way. You are so sweet. And you are a gift from God. Don't ever forget that, honey. And you need to love yourself. And I loved her. I was like, I would watch her videos. And she would just put me in such a great mood, you know? Surround yourself with people that have good vibes and good energy. That's all I have to say. Mama Ta is somebody that has good vibes and good energy. I love Mama Tot, you know, and I, I feel so much for that woman, for the shit that she has gone through with the passing of her son and how he passed away. I feel for her, and she turned around, and she shared authentically and vulnerably how she w felt and what she was going through. Like, I mean, honest to God, like, I mean, that just broke, that broke my heart for her. I felt for her. I love Mama Tot. I love Mama Tot. She problematic? If she's problematic, I don't know about it. Uh, Jessica Ballinger, with her being in group chats, is what, I'm not getting into all that today. Smoky Glow. Well, I talked about this in my video the other day. So, Smoky Glow came out in a video, and she, and I, I didn't know about this until people brought it to me, and I started DMing me like crazy. They're like, Smoky Glow is 100 So, Smoky Glow came out, Hannah came out in a video. She hadn't posted a video in a long time. She came out in a video and talked about where she's been, and that she's 100 days sober, and that she went here, and then she went to a treatment facility, and she talked about being 100 days sober. I went over and I watched the video. I, listen, I congratulate anybody on their sobriety journey, okay? And I left her a comment and stuff like that over there. I, Hannah, congratulations to you. I wish you the best. And, you know, I think it was interesting to me. And, like, people were asking me to make a whole video responding to it. I'm not making a whole video responding to Smoky Glow coming out and talking about being sober. Congratulations to anybody that can put a lo one hour, let alone one day sober, let a hundred days. That's a fucking miracle, okay? That woman is a miracle. Smoky Glow is a miracle for being sober today. And congratulations to her, okay? That's amazing to me. But I will say this about this, right? Is that... I got a lot of people in my DMs wanting to pick apart this and pick apart that, blah, 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 blah. Listen, what I knew at 100 days sober and what I know at 29 and a half years sober are two completely different things. Two, they're not even in the same world, okay? She, that gal is doing her best, and I bless her for it, okay? I mean, good for her. The other thing is this, and I've said this in tons of videos. I don't know that in early sobriety, I could have got on video and shared where I was at as vulnerably and as authentically as she did. And she said on there that she was, like, ashamed to come out and tell her story because she she had, you know, talked about sobriety in the past and whatever. I thought she was 100%. I was like, she is so vulnerable and raw and honest in this video. I was like, bravo, bravo. You are, and, and I, I think I left this in the comment, but like what she doesn't realize by that video is how many people she's helping. It's not even about her telling her story. It's about her sharing her story is allowing other people to come out and share their story as well with their friends, with their families and get honest with themselves. Like she's helping people. That video is a powerful video. So I give it to Smoky Glow. Congratulations, Hannah, on your sobriety and, and feeling comfortable enough to come forward. Like I said, I don't know. Like even when I started, you know, I, I would have been 22 years sober or 21 years sober when I started on YouTube. I don't know how long I would have been 20 years sober. Even then, it was hard to talk about sobriety, you know? Even then, it was like, I don't know what people are going to think, you know? And so, for her to come out at 100 days sober, I, I, I've said this before. I don't think I could have done it. I congratulate her on that. I thought it was an amazing video. I, I, I wish her all the best. I wish her all the best. Okay, let's go a smoky glow. Somebody else asked me. Jacqueline or Manny and Laura's podcast. Well, y'all know, listen, here's the thing, okay, about Jacqueline and Manny and Laura. So Jacqueline Hill went on Manny and Laura's All the Fools podcast. That podcast is ridiculous to me. But anyway, here's the thing. I went and looked at it. It's an hour and 50 minutes. <laughs> y'all, okay, I have better things to do. And I know people are like, well, we have better things to do than watch a 45-minute Peter Mon video. Well, I have better things to do than watch an hour and 50-minute video of those three fools talking about nonsense. Okay, I just cannot with them, okay? Why don't you first come out and ex explain why you took down the Colleen Ballinger video, Manny and Laura, okay? And why you never addressed it. Why don't you come out with that first? And then maybe I'll watch one of your videos. But people, so many people have asked me to watch it. I guess I'll watch it. I mean, even on two times speed, that's an, what, an hour? I mean, girl, girl, that's three episodes of Sister Wives. I can't. Are you kidding me? I don't know who some of these people are. People ask Patrick Starr. She's still around, girl. Where's she at? 
She's still wearing turbans. I don't know where Patrick Star is. I haven't looked into Patrick Star in so long. I could care less about Patrick Star. I hope Patrick Star is living his best life. Good luck to you, Patrick. I hope you're doing well. I don't know what's going on with Patrick Star these days. Okay. Uh, so many people are talking about this TikTok stuff. Mississippi. I saw people made videos about her. I don't know nothing about that stuff. Um, Morrissey. Interesting. Okay, so Morrissey, the lead singer of the Smiths, which is, uh, probably my all-time... This is gonna stop. Hold on just a second. Oh, just dropped my fan. Okay. Uh, Morrissey, who is the lead singer of the Smiths, which is probably my all-time favorite band of life, um, and also, uh, a solo artist. I love Morrissey's music. <laughs> it's probably my most downloaded music in my iTunes is the Smiths and Morrissey. Um, but he's become kind of problematic in the last couple years with some of his views and things like that, hasn't he, you know? And that's where it's like, can you separate the artist from the artist? Um, I don't know. Can you? I, 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 have, a, I have a difficult time separating the, the artist from... It's like J.K. Rowling, okay? Now, Morrissey hasn't said things along that line, okay? Or done the R. Kelly's and stuff like that, right? Oh, apparently somebody, because I was talking about Step in the Name of Love, because I love that song so much. Oh my God, I used to dance. <sighs> my husband and I, we used to go to Land Sharks. What night was it, babe? He just came home, I could hear him. Do you remember what night we used to go to Land Sharks? Was that Mondays? Oh, he must sure. be out. What? <laughs> Sure. sure, he said. I can remember me and this girl. We used to be on the dance floor dancing to R. Kelly's uh, Step in the Name of Love. I love that song so much. I have loved that song. I mean, probably, I don't even know, since it came out, okay? I can remember going to this lesbian bar called The Tent and dancing to Step in the Name of Love. It's a tent. I love that song so much. But I won't sing it anymore because of R. Kelly, you know? Everybody, you, when you, that whole R. Kelly mess, right? Well, somebody, and I haven't looked into this, because I but I love the Google, so I'll be looking at this. Somebody mentioned and said that all of the money, the proceeds from Step in the Name of Love, if you buy it, it goes to the victims. Is that true? Because if it is, is it okay then to download Step in the Name of Love? Because I love that song. You don't ruin that song for me. What did you ask me? Morrissey. I don't know. So it's like, okay, with J.K. Rowling, somebody asked me about J.K. Rowling. Like, I really struggle. I mean, J.K. Rowling, this is the thing for me about J.K. Rowling. Okay, let's take it. So J.K. Rowling has come out and made a lot of, like, anti-trans statements. My issue with that is, Girl, believe what you want to believe. Have, I, I, I think it's really unhealthy to the world, but you have your stance. But here's the thing, okay, that you have to take it one step further. J.K. Rowling wrote those Harry Potter books, of which I have read half of the series and haven't finished it. I don't know if I will or not. And the one thing stopping me from it is I don't know how I feel about J.K. Rowling, okay? Like, people think that I, that I feel this way only about beauty influencers and stuff. Oh, no, I take this around the world and back again, okay? Uh, in Martika's kitchen. But anyway, um, you know, here's the thing is that those Harry Potter books were a really, really safe place for a lot of LGBTQIA plus kids and adults that felt like they could escape to the world building world of J.K. Rowling. For then J.K. Rowling to come out and make comments that are so anti trans and anti LGBTQIA plus to me is it's like taking that world, that safe place away from somebody. Um, I'm not saying that she doesn't have a right to her opinion. I just don't know that I can continue to support somebody that needs to feel that strongly. You created these worlds that were such safe places. I can't tell you how many people that I have met in the LGBTQI plus community that absolutely loved those books. And they were growing up and they were being bullied at school and bullied in their own homes, escaped into the J.K. Rowling's books and felt like it was a safe place for them to just years later have the, the rug ripped out from underneath them. That's where I really struggle with this, like separating the artist from the art, you know, the, the art from the artist kind of person, you know, I, I, I really, I, I have a hard time doing that. So, um, so yeah, okay, let's go on here and see Queen of Melrose. Well, I've seen a couple interviews. Matt Cullen, I think, did an interview. Um, I, I haven't watched it yet. I usually watch all of Matt Cullen's videos. I love him. I think he's a genius. I think what he's doing. I, I'll tell you what I love about Matt Cullen. If you guys don't know who Matt Cullen is, Matt Cullen, and he reached out to me years ago, either to, I think he was either reaching out to me to do an interview or help him set up an interview with somebody. I can't remember. But anyway, 
Um, he's such a nice guy. And he does all these LGBTQI plus interviews. And um, and what I love about him is that he stuck to what he loved. And like I can remember when I first started watching him, his channel had like 20,000 subscribers. And now he gets like a shit ton of views. And he has like, I don't know how many I, I could look, but he has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He's invited to stuff all the time. Like, I'm like, bravo. You stuck to what you believed in. And I think that that is super, super powerful. Okay, let me just pick like one or two more of these. Uh, Jacqueline on Manny and Laura's podcast. I'm going to do that. Gypsy Rose, clouding for her divorce. Um, okay, hold on a second. James Charles. Uh, I think we all know how I feel about James Charles. And, uh, Robbie DeChristie and her involvement with an anti-LGBT group. What? Oh, I might have to look into that. <laughs> Or was that what I was talking about earlier? Hmm, I don't know. Um, let me see if I can pick one more from this. RuPaul, I recovered that. Jeff Lewis. Okay, um, you know, here's my thing about Jeff Lewis. Jeff Lewis, who does, like, the TV show and does, like, the Bravo coverage and stuff like that. He's got, like, the thing is, is that Jeff Lewis and I are both very direct people. So, like, when he makes a statement, like, he'll take, make a statement. Oh, this is what I do like about Jeff Lewis is that he'll make a statement, and then later he'll be like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Like, it was, like, too harsh. It was too wrong or whatever. Like, he's very self-aware. I just feel like his... <laughs> this is probably, like, looking into a mirror. It's probably, like, very much see the same thing in myself. He's just so, like, this is my opinion, and this is how I feel about it, right? Like, and I guess I kind of respect that, but at the same time, if it's not, like, a shared opinion by me... Now I just understood why people take such issue with me that don't share my own opinion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want me to uh, give you my opinion on any kind of public figure or influencer, put it in the comment section below or go over to my Instagram and put it on my Instagram. I think it's got, let's see how many hours it still has up. Well, right now, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It, oh, it has, it still has like 10 hours on it. So anyway, let me know uh, over there or in the comment section below. Follow me on the Instagram. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.